Good afternoon, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I want to share a quote with you by a person who posted on LinkedIn. It's a friend that posted on LinkedIn. And of course, it matches exactly what I wanted to talk with you about today. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about what's cognitive dissonance. So the term is cognitive dissonance. This quotation is by someone named Frank Fannin. And uh, because it's a bit of a longer quotation, I'm going to read it out to you to make sure you get exactly what I want to share. So this quotation says, Sometimes people hold a core belief that is very strong. When they are presented with evidence that works against that belief, the new evidence cannot be accepted. It would create a feeling that is extremely uncomfortable called cognitive dissonance. And because it is so important to protect the core belief, they will rationalize, ignore, and even deny anything that doesn't fit in with the core belief. Isn't that interesting? So do you understand this? This cognitive dissonance term, once we have a belief about something, when even we are presented with facts or evidence that's actually showing that our belief is not true, or it's not what's reflecting the truth of what we're seeing in terms of facts or evidence. Our system does not really want to believe it. We don't want to change the belief. And what's interesting is we don't really allow ourselves to process properly because we're really fixed in the belief that we want. So I thought I'd remind you about some of the common situations that can happen where these things happen. So if we look at nutrition, for example, a person who eats what they believe is healthy and they're exercising and they're sleeping well, and suddenly they get some health condition. It could be a simple cold or a cough, or it could be a muscle strain or sprain, um, anything that happens. And they think, how is this possible? I, I'm doing everything right, even in terms of a muscle strain or sprain. I actually stretch before I work out, so I don't even know how this happened. So to get into the awareness that I need to do something different, I need to change something to feel better, is a little bit of a step to take. Then you look at relationships, which just is much more common to see. I'll start with work relationships. So let's say you start a job and you've been promised that you will be promoted and or get uh, getting a raise and you're not getting this. So let's say at first you were being told that this will be happening in the next six months. You're going to either get promoted or get a raise. And at first, you're very excited because, oh, you've just got six months and you're going to prove your stuff and you're going to get to that spot. That time comes and your boss tells you that, oh, you know what? You haven't worked here long enough for us to really give a raise right now. But, you know, if you work another six months, I'm sure that you will be worthy of getting that raise. So just just keep at it. So you keep at it and you think, okay, six more months, I can do this. Six more months come and you ask, well, what about that raise? And they say, oh, we've had really strong cutbacks and we're not going to be able to give anyone raise this year. The next six months goes by and you recognize that some people are getting raises and you're not. And your belief is that you will be getting a raise. So you're thinking, I wonder what's going on. And now suddenly COVID time comes up and the boss says that, yeah, we can't give a raise now. It's COVID time. And you think, but other people are getting raises. So what's happening for you? The facts are clear. The facts are very clear that you're being told that you were going to be getting a raise within six months and that's turned into a year and a half, maybe two years, and you still haven't got that or a promotion. So those are just the facts, but the mind wants to believe, I am going to be getting it because the boss did say this and very early on, so I know it's coming my way. Now we do the same things in relationships. In relationships, what can happen? You start dating someone and uh, things are going in a really good direction and the person says, you know, I always want to be here for you. I am going to try to help you in every way that I can to make this relationship work. That's great. And so, you know, you know what kind of needs you have and you might be sharing it with the person and they've said they're going to help you. But you don't see any actions. Maybe you don't see it in a month. Maybe you don't see it in two months, maybe six months, maybe uh, 10 years. So you're thinking your core belief was that this person is going to be helping you in the way that you know that you have expressed you need. Let's say that, that core belief has even been strengthened because you got married. You got married and that means in your belief that once you're married, then it, it's a whole different level. Then definitely whatever you, you've said is going to come through in actions and the actions aren't there. So what happens in that time? 
there is such um, a resistance, I want to say, to the actual understanding of the information that's gained. So in terms of the, the facts that you're being presented with, the evidence that you're being presented with, that something's not changing, even though you believe it will change, again, I think most of us know that uh, you know a few weeks can turn into months, can turn into years, and things cannot change. So the biggest change to make in these times is that restructuring of your own mind, of understanding the facts for what they are. What you choose to do with them, do I need to make a change whether in the job, in the relationship, in my nutrition, for my health, any of these areas, do I need to make a change? Am I ready to make a change? Am I accepting? That's where you're starting, right? Am I accepting that a change is needed in this time? And that's very important to be aware of. Now, most of you, <clears throat> excuse me, most of you also know that I'm very much into energy work right now. So with all of the clients that I work with, I work with energy work. And in energy work, I like to talk about uh, the two parts of the human, which is going to be the human form, and then there's going to be the higher consciousness within ourselves. So some people call it the soul, some people call it God consciousness, some people call it universal energy. Whatever term that people put onto it, I like to distinguish these two sides. And I want to come back to cognitive dissonance. And I'm going to tell you that in cognitive dissonance, that's the, the medical terminology, and from a spiritual perspective, we can think about misalignment between the body and soul. So the mind-body, I'll say, is going to be one, and that's going to be the human form. And then there's the soul. And I want you to know that the soul always knows the truth. It knows and accepts the truth, and it's okay with the truth, however it comes. The mind-body might resist the truth. So when that is happening, that's going to be a cognitive dissonance time. And when the mind-body comes to a place of at least acceptance, it becomes more in alignment with the soul. When that acceptance happens, good things start flowing through. There's clarity that starts coming about the directions or the steps needed to be taken. They're not always easy steps, but they can be. So if your belief is that I can make sure I am seeing that there is an easy way to do this, or we can have a different sort of not easy time where the mind can say this is not going to be easy and yes you might make the changes that you choose to make or need to make and you will fight it every step of the way so there will be resistance with it even though you are making changes. I like for people to encourage easy changes in their own systems or lives and again change is not so easy for most people but in the recognition of the first step of acceptance it makes things a lot easier. So today I would love for you to think about, are there areas in your life that have some cognitive dissonance? And remember that most people are aware of some areas and many people don't really discuss them, whether in their own minds, they might complain about them in their own minds, they might be repeating them in their own minds, they might be ruminating over them, but they're not really taking conscious steps to change or to go with the flow of change that's being directed. So. Right now, today, I hope you'll think about what are the areas of your life that have a little bit of background cognitive dissonance? Can you bring it to the forefront and recognize it and accept it? And not with a, oh, poor me, I have to accept this sort of energy, but more with the, I understand this and I accept it. This is what I'm going to do. That is empowering. That's where I'd like you to be. And I hope you choose to be there. And that's where I'll leave you today. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. And remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.